We're back with Season 2, Episode 5 of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. This week having a Spock-centric episode once again. While this is great, I do wonder if we're fully needing another Mr. Spock episode when we just had one in the series' first season. Especially when characters like Ortega's and last week's episode didn't fully get the time they deserved. This episode of Star Trek felt very classic Trek. It honestly felt like an episode of the original series or something from the next generation. Essentially the crew are going about their normal lives on board the Enterprise, then some routine casual mission goes wrong, causing someone to have a rough day. In this case, it is Mr. Spock. The episode has many highlights, such as the command crew trying to teach Spock how he speaks like a Vulcan. Yeah. Spoiler warning, this is our full episode review of Star Trek Strange New Worlds Season 2, Episode 5. Welcome to Trek Central, I'm your host Captain Jack and let's get straight into it. Before we warp into this video, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team here at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media for daily updates on the Star Trek universe. As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, because if you're talking about Star Trek, we want to hear about it. Get commenting. Make it so. I'm going to whack this fly at the keyboard. There's a rather big fly in here flying around. Get the raid. <laughs> Kill it. Yes, Master. It will be done. We interrupt this regular scheduled Star Trek video review as we're being attacked by a fly in the studio. Problem resolved. So, Spock. Spock going human. Not what I expected to do with Star Trek, but here we are. Now, Mr. Spock is half human, half Vulcan. The episode shows how Spock interacts with his fellow shipmates when it is his normal Vulcan South. South? Self. There we go. However, it makes more sense when it flips the show as its human side, as we already saw the other established scenes. Once Spock changed to be fully human, it's great to see the parallels to the earlier scenes we were shown. For example, the scene between Sam Cook and Mrs. Spock over the mess on the desk was hilarious and great to put into the episode and a personal highlight of myself. The Vulcan ritual is great to watch Spock, Captain Pike, Dupring and her parents. Once again, the common conflict arises of Spock choosing Starfleet over his Vulcan lifestyle, which arises here and there. While we've been over Spock as a character, we must talk about Ethan Peck. He excelled in his acting range in this episode. Playing Spock in Star Trek is very, very hard. However, having to play a human version of Spock is even more challenging. Trying to take a well-established character and radically change him is very, very tough. Still, Ethan pulls it off very well in this episode and sells the changed Spock. Having Amanda Grayson appearing back on Star Trek is great. We last saw her in Star Trek Discovery, with the same actress as Mia Krishna. Here she naturally steps back into a role of Spock's mother and the calm and caring character we expect. As the wife of Ambassador Sarak, she's well versed in the life of a Vulcan, so she's perfect character to reintroduce in this episode to work with Spock and to Pring's parents. Spock's relationship with his parents has been a long running bit of established Star Trek canon. It's also established in this episode that Spock is not currently speaking with his father, Sarak, for some reason that I expect might link with the original series episode where the Ambassador and Amanda come on board the Enterprise. If you remember the episode, well done, I've not watched it in probably over a decade. For a while now, we have been wondering what this interdimensional alien realm was that appeared in the trailers for the second season. Here we see it in the episode. Having Ahura, Ortegas and Nurse Chapel on the away team was a good choice. These three characters have a good sense of humour that works well and bounces off each other. Having Chapel interact with this brand new alien species was a good choice. Especially as the character could potentially leave the Enterprise soon, but we know by the end of the episode she doesn't, so... The idea of aliens fixing or repairing another person we know from Star Trek has been introduced previously. It's been explored in Star Trek before in different forms, I can't name them on top of my head but I definitely know it has been done. The reveal that Spock chooses to protect Nurse Chapel also reinforces the feelings and established connection we've seen in previous episodes of Strange New Worlds, especially when it comes to Chapel admitting she has feelings of Spock to save his life. As I said earlier, having a horn of Tegas here to help his situation is a good choice and eventually gets resolution by the end of the episode. All in all, these characters are coming together to make Pike's Enterprise feel more and more like a family. Speaking about the Kirkuvians, these blue and yellow aliens somewhat speak like helping chatbots, which is rather funny. Still, it's very good to get a very new alien species that works well for Star Trek. I think we should have spent more time with them in the episode, like it's a new alien species, showing up demands a bit more fanfare, but yes, it was not the focus of the episode, unfortunately. I've got to say, with Strange New Worlds as of late, the second season has lost momentum. What I mean by that is the show is called Strange New Worlds, yet we seem to be going to oh so familiar locations and characters. 
the first episode of season 2 took us somewhere new, at least. It also hints at an upcoming conflict with the Gorn, which Admiral Robert April is involved with. However, that momentum feels to have faded by now. Hopefully, the Gorn conflict does come up sooner rather than later, as it feels that the incoming threat has been slowly forgotten. It would have made sense to hint at the incoming conflict in the previous episode. We know Captain Patel is involved thanks to traders. So for example, if she mentioned she was being deployed to a familiar location on Apple April's map in episode 1, we viewers who pay extra attention would know what is coming up and it would sort of connect the dots a little further, rather than it being a surprise in about 3 episodes time. While as fantastic as Strange New Worlds is taking up a classic and cool approach to starting storytelling, the series is playing it too safe. What I mean about this is it's not taking too many risks. This episode does introduce us to a new alien species and we get Captain Pike attempting to communicate with them. Still, I remain strong that the second season of Strange New Worlds has lost its momentum that we typically expect from the show. Yes, we did see a new alien species, but it wasn't a strange new world. We were in the Vulcan system, it wasn't really exploring out of there. Sure, it was an uncharted moon, but yeah, do you see what I mean? Let me know if you agree with me or you think I'm just saying it for the sake of it, but I do feel like the second season has lost the momentum and sort of excitement we expect from Strange New Worlds. Titled Charades, the episode is written by Catherine Lynn and Henry Alonzo Myers, while Jordan Canning takes on the role of a director for the episode. I've got to commend Canning, the episode's direction worked well. While mostly self-contained on board the Enterprise, the camera angles are more worked well to flesh out the feelings of Mrs. Spock and those of Nurse Chapel. Michael Benya and Laura Patnick take on the role of Pring's parents. They both excel in their roles as these older Vulcan parental figures. I'm particularly a big fan of Michael, as he was in a show called The Expanse. The parallel between each character was particularly interesting. For example, while Michael's character was keen to try Pike's cooking and interacting with everyone on board, Elora's character was your typical Vulcan mother with her emotions in check and sort of reining in the husband. It's a typical TV trope, but it worked well in Star Trek. This was a good quality episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Strange New Worlds is not taking the biggest risks right now, but it was a quality episode exploring more of Mr. Spock, but I wonder if we fully needed another episode focused on Mr. Spock. Still, Gia Sandu stole the performances to Pring once again, and the episode further establishes the complicated relationship between Mrs. Spock and to Pring. I mean, Spock sums up this episode of Captain Pike by saying, It's been quite a day. And I think that it's fair assessment of everything that has happened. While a short and sweet scene, Spock sitting with Captain Pike and having a drink helps establish their close relationship. This is something I think needs to be developed further and shown further in Strange New Worlds. We never have a good working and professional relationship, but it would make a lot more sense to see them having that personal one of sitting down and having a drink between captain and officer. Just a thought. F*** off, let's really fly down here now. We're being attacked. <laughs> Don't forget that if you want to discuss the latest Star Trek episodes of those Catch Trek Central live on Sundays at 9pm BST on twitch.tv slash trekcentral. So, what do you think of the latest episode? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. If you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news, lore, and more, then hit that subscribe button to never- Let's go ambush by a fly in the face, damn. F*** off. It's in the tripods, man, it's in the tripods! <laughs> Not me, f hell! There was a fly. Oh, Jesus. There he is. Don't oh. swing my feet, please. Oh. <laughs> off! Oh, it's gone. Where the f is he? It's gone over there now. You don't have a skin condition, right? Christ. A skin condition. There it is. It's f***ing... <laughs> <laughs> fire, fire everything! This fly needs to chill the f*** out. As editor Troy combats a fly in the recording studio that we're being ambushed by, if you want to keep up to date on all the latest Star Trek news and more, then hit that subscribe button to never miss a video from the team at Trek Central. You can also follow us on social media, God help us, red alert. I've been Captain Jack, stuff the rest of it, we'll see you next week for more Strange New Worlds and San Diego Comic Con. Goodbye, I'm off.